Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. My name is Krzysztof Ostaszewski. You can find information about me at smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. I direct the actuarial program at Illinois State University. You can find information about it at smarturl.it forward slash actuary. If you would like to make a tax deductible donation to support our students, please go to smarturl.it forward slash help ISU actuary. Here's the problem for today. This is a problem from the last, just recently given, Casualty Actual Society Course S examination, problem number 11. Um, and uh, in it, you are given the following transition matrix for a Markov chain with two states, 0 and 1. The matrix is denoted by A, and it tells you that the probability of transition from state 0 to state 0 is 0.25. The probability of transition from state 0 to state 1 is 0.75. The probability of transition from state 1 to state 0 is 0.01. And the probability of transition from state 1 to state 1 is 0.99. At time t equal to 0, the Markov chain is in state 0. Calculate the expected number of steps needed to return to state 0. We can see immediately that this is a finite, very finite, only two um, states mark of chain. All states communicate. So we can rather quickly calculate limiting uh, probability of being in state 0 and in, of being in state 1. What is it for state 0? Well, it's a solution of the equation um, pi 0, the long-term probability of being of state 0, actually a system of two equations. The first one is pi 0 is equal to uh, pi 0 times p 0 0 plus pi 1 times p 1 0. And in this case that's pi 0 times 0 0.25 plus pi 1 times 0 0.01. And also the second equation is that pi 1 is equal to 1 minus pi 0. So if we plug that in, then we get that 0 0.75 pi 0 is equal to 1 minus pi 0 times 0 0.01, which is 0 0.01 minus 0 0.01 pi 0. And therefore 0 0.76 pi 0 is equal to 0 0.01, and uh, pi 0 is 1 over 76. Now how does this relate to uh, the expected time to return? Well, it, it actually relates very directly. So let's go over how this idea of how the two relate to each other. So let us write Nij for the expected number of steps to reach state J for the first time, given that um, we start the process um, started in state I. And in the same vein, let NII um, be the expected number of steps to return to state I, given that you start in state I, which is exactly the kind of thing we're looking for. These are sometimes referred to as mean first passage and mean first return times. Okay, well, NIJ is the expected number of steps to reach J, given that x0 is i, given that you start in, in i. And of course, you could start from some other point, but without loss of generality, this is it. Um, then we can write it as something like this, that summation over all k, using basically the law of total probability, is the expected number of steps to reach j, given that x0 is i, and x1 is k times p i k, the probability of transition from i to k. Okay. Uh, and then that's the sum of those p i k of, uh, multiplied, uh, multiplied, this p i k is multiplied by 1 if j is equal to k. Because if j is equal to k, then the number of steps is 1. We just reached what we wanted. 
or 1 plus nkj if j is not equal to k, because then we can use the knowledge about the expected number of steps to go from k to j, given that we are in k steps 1. And we take the summation over all k, so that, that's it. Therefore, this is pij times 1 plus the summation over k not equal to j of pik times 1 plus nkj. Well, let's multiply out the 1 plus nkj by pik in the second term in the summation and separate um, the um, summation over k not equal to j of pik and then the second summation of pik times nkj. Then the first terms altogether are added to all probabilities of the form pi and then something. Well, then those add up to 1. And the second terms, the term is summation over k not equal to j of nkj times pik. And this is true for any any ij. So we can actually write this out in the matrix form that every single nij can be written like this. So the matrix of all possible nij can be written as the matrix of ones plus the transition matrix p multiplied out by this matrix of NIGs except with the diagonal zeroed out. Re the terms on the diagonal are replaced by zeros because you see that the summation is over k not equal to j. Well then we can rewrite this by multiplying it by the limiting probabilities vector, pi vector, of the all the pi 0, pi 1, and so on. Uh, we multiply both sides by it. And on the left-hand side, we, we have pi times the matrix of those nij's. Uh, and that's equal to pi times a matrix of 1's. But note that the vector of probabilities, if you multiply it by a vector of 1's, so horizontal vector of probabilities times vertical matrix of 1's, well, the probabilities add up to 1. So you just get a vector of 1's plus pi times p. Well, that these are limiting probabilities. And one of the key properties of limiting probabilities is that if the, they are stationary probabilities, which means that if the state is in um, those s states with those probabilities, if you multiply by pi, you stay in the same uh, distribution of probabilities of states. So pi times p is is pi again. Okay, so what we end up with is pi times the matrix of n i j's on the left hand side. And on the right-hand side, too, except that it has zeros uh, along the diagonal. So other than those things on the diagonal, everything else can be cancelled out. Or you can just move the, la the second matrix from the right-hand side and subtract it from the matrix on the left-hand side. And what is left is just pi times the diagonal matrix that has n0, 0, n1, 1, n2, 2, and so on in it. And that is equal to the vector of 1's. And that tells you that um, pi i times n i i is equal to 1 for every i, so that n i i is equal to 1 over pi i. So that's the crucial message of all this. All this work is to show that under the conditions under which limiting probabilities exist, stationary probabilities exist, the expected time to return to a given state is simply 1 over the stationary probability of being in that state. And in this problem, n0 is 1 over pi 0, 
So 1 over 1 over 76, so this is 76, answer E. Please remember this is copyrighted material. The problem itself comes from the Casualty Actual Society, and it belongs to the Society, uh, Casualty Actual Society. It's reproduced with permission, but the solution is mine. Good luck in your studies and good luck on the test.